Flu Reefers Almeria Vetis Reeforcoria. Today's video is dedicated to cyanobacteria. I happen to have gotten some of it, so I'm going to go in this video through different steps. First of all, I'm going to explain what is it, how do you actually get it in your aquarium, and how to combat it and get rid of it. So hold on one second. Okay, and here we are at the tank. I'm, on, I'm focusing uh, to the substrate. This is the center of the tank. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you to make the observation of where I have it, of course, on the substrate. Let's pan to the right. Okay, as you notice, uh, well, I've already done uh, certain, I've addressed it in certain ways. And so on this side, I did have more, but now it's, it's really starting to dissipate. But watch what happens when I go to the left-hand side. Okay, there is most of the concentration that I have uh, cyanobacteria. Okay, like I mentioned before, uh, when I started the video, what is it? Well, cyanobacteria is also called blue-green algae or actually slime algae, which is actually what it looks like, like a, a slime. Now, this type of uh, organism lies somewhere between an organism of algae and an organism of bacteria. Now, what causes it? Well, high nutrients on the water column, overfeeding, poor water circulation, foods containing silicates. Uh, I'm going to explain briefly what it's all about. High water temperatures high lighting, and then young, uh, unmature aquarium, which in this case, this tank is less than one year, so that really didn't help the actual getting of uh, cyanobacteria. Now, when it comes to uh, silicates, what is silicates? Okay, uh, silicates is a gel which is used to keep frozen foods together. So right there, what I'm explaining or alerting you is if you use a lot, a lot of frozen foods, be careful uh, because that silicate uh, contains and it will bring up your nitrates and phosphates. Although a little phosphates and a little nitrates is good to your organisms, to your corals, but if you overfeed, that is, is going to be an issue in itself. Now, uh, how to get rid of it or to starve it from the actual nutrients that uh, uh, keeps it going? Well, one thing, uh, if using frozen foods, of course, what you should do is soak it in RO water. Be, you know, don't, don't just get the cube and just uh, thaw it out on the actual water column, on the actual aquarium. Uh, go ahead and just get a, a plastic cup, put some RO water, and just put the portion that you more or less think that you're uh, going to feed your uh, fish or your corals. And just soak it and then try to see if, if you can strain it. Then that strain, um, that's what you would uh, pour in the aquarium. And then uh, for now, until you get rid of the cyanobacteria, instead of feeding uh, every day or twice a, a day, feed every other day. The purpose of this is actually to lower that nutrient, to, to lower the silicates. Now this, of course, I'm referring and I'm targeting uh, the frozen food. But if you weren't using frozen foods, if you were using like pellets, flakes, or uh, sea veggies, uh, still just uh, pull back on the actual feeding and feed less and feed like uh, every other day. One, uh, one other thing that you should do is actually vacuum the uh, substrate. So like let's say when you're going to do a water change, go ahead and vacuum as much as you can of the cyanobacteria. Not that, that, that you have to completely get rid of it, but I mean there's areas in the tank that you might not be able to reach. Don't worry about it. Just try to get as much out of it as you can as you're vacuuming out the uh, substrate. And then I would recommend do a water change. I'd say like once a week or once every other week. And I'd say maybe like 15 or 20% water change. And then one final thing before I go to the final uh, 
part of this video, uh, protein skimming. If you have a protein skimmer, man, turn that sucker on. Uh, keep it on 24-7 so that'll start to get rid of the uh, nutrients. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to shoot away from the tank and I'm going to show you some uh, final little things uh, that I use or that in general um, every person I would recommend to should actually use to help get rid of the cyanobacteria. So hold on one second. Okay, and here I am at uh, my dining table and I thought I'd show you some items here. Number one, uh, this apparatus, which is actually uh, to scrape algae out of the tank, I've been using it to actually, shall we say, rake, rake the uh, substrate. It's not gonna work. What's gonna happen is, yeah, uh, when you go into the tank and you're gonna rake it and do this, it will dissipate it. Uh, you won't see it, but it's actually there. So this really would work temporarily, like for a shot, um, a video, but it'll come back in a short period of time. All you've done is, is just like put it underneath the uh, substrate. Now, these three things you see here, um, I've been doing some research and this is what they highly recommend and it does work. Uh, if you use uh, on, on the mechanical side, this is actually the mechanical side filtration part of any tank. Okay, if you use filter pads, I happen to use these uh, filter pads. Uh, I have the custom caddy on the left hand side and then on the top level, what I do is I, I cut a little section of uh, these little pads and that's what goes on the top. I'm changing them weekly. But what you can do is, uh, let's say if you're gonna do a water change or in between the water changes, you wanna blow the rocks because there's a little cyano cyanobacteria. Uh, just do that. Um, let uh, the uh, filtration, the mechanical part of the filtration, pick it up and then uh, go ahead and change it. Uh, change the filter pad again if you use filter pads. If you use uh, filter socks, I would go ahead and use a 100 micron filter sock and I would go ahead and, and change it. I, I change it on this 40 uh, weekly. But if you have cyanobacteria and you do what I was explaining uh, shortly of uh, with a turkey baser, uh, like blowing the rocks and, and trying to get rid of it or something and the water gets cloudy, just go ahead and, and change it. And then one final thing, also carbon. Uh, I would go ahead and uh, if you're not using carbon, be, uh, beyond all means, go ahead, start using carbon. If you are using it, then change it. Change it more frequently. Uh, that'll also help to take the, the toxins, the nutrients out from the water. And not only that, it'll uh, make your uh, water look so clear, which is one of the purposes of the carbon. In this case, I uh, happen to use the bulk reef su supply, the ORX 0.8 carbon is the one that I use. I change it, I'd say like once a month, but in a situation like this, if I was to do a water change like every one or two weeks, I would go ahead and change it. So that's basically what this video was all about. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the thumbs up. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. One final thing that I forgot to mention uh, is GFO. Uh, that's another form of getting rid of cyanobacteria. This is the uh, Aqua Gadget reactor. I'm not using it at the present time, but if I did, I would use it with GFO. So that's another way of getting rid of cyanobacteria. One note, uh, if you do decide to use a reactor, and you decide to use GFO, do not uh, overdose. Because believe it or not, when it comes to certain species of corals, geared, I would say, towards SPS, aquaporals and all that, they do need a little trace amount of nitrates and a little trace amount of phosphates. If you overdose GFO and you bring those parameters to zero, it might hamper the actual health 
of your corals. So if you decide to uh, doing all these uh, mechanical phase of your filtration, the carbon and and the uh, filter sock and pads and all that, and you decide to also start to apply GFO, do not uh, overdose the GFO. So that's one final note that I thought I mentioned. Thank you very much.